So what are the Canon Mega Tank printers, and actually, are they any good? Well, hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today, what we're going to be looking at is the new series of printers, the Mega Tank printers from Canon, and mainly the G550. Now there is a G650 as well, part of the Pixma range of these Mega Tank printers. Now the main difference being is the G650 has a scanner on. I've actually been sent the G550 which doesn't have the scanner on, but apart from that it's exactly the same printer. Now before we dive in and get started on these printers, I have to just say, please don't forget to subscribe. Now stick around to the end of the video because I will have a voucher code that you can use. It will give you 15% off photo speed papers. So what are Mega Tank printers and what is the importance of Canon actually releasing these printers? Now the Mega Tank printers are basically Canon's answer to Epson's own EcoTank printers, the refillable cartridges or refillable ink tanks, should I say, a bit more accurate. And within the printer, they have little reservoirs and tanks that you buy a little bottle with and you basically fill them up. So within the printer, just under the lid here, there are little tanks just here and you just lift up the flap and basically just fill up the inks with a lovely little bottle. Nice and easy, no mess either because they've got these special valves on there as well that kind of do everything for you. Now, both Epson and Canon's versions, like the EcoTank and the Mega Tanks from Canon, generally only have six inks at the moment. Now, the Canon does have six inks. It has a, a yellow, red, cyan, magenta, and a gray ink as well. So I'm really interested to see the black and white capabilities of this printer. And also it has a black ink. Now, the ink is dye ink, so it's not fully archival, should we say, but saying that it will last well over 50 years in the right conditions. Now, Canon's Mega Tank printers are limited to A4 at the minute. I have been told they are releasing an A3. I don't know when that date is and not, not too sure Canon do, to be honest, at the minute, but hopefully it'll be out towards the end of the year because then it can rival the Epson ET8550 with its scanner and everything in, in there, the EcoTank, because as you know, if you've watched that video that I've made on it, I was really impressed with it actually and the way it works. So I'm hoping this is just a bit smaller at A4, but I'm hoping it's kind of going to be the same result. So I'm expecting similar kind of results. The gamut should be pretty much the same with the inks and things as well. This printer actually does have a red in there as well instead of that extra black. So maybe this printer is a bit more geared towards colour photography than black and white. But we'll have a look and see and that's a great all-rounder. Now I'm going to be testing this printer with four different papers. Our Photo Smooth Pearl because it's like an everyday paper that most of us are going to be using and kind of printing on. Also our Matte Ultra, which again is another everyday kind of matte paper that we're going to be printing. Then I'm going to try some fine art papers because where I find these printers sometimes fall down, the smaller type of printers, is in the thicker type of papers that are going to go through the printer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the natural soft textured bright white, which is 315 grams. Also the Legacy Gloss. Now this is a really thick paper that we do, so I'm really interested to know how this printer can handle itself. Now I've also printed off a set of all these images on the Pro 1000 as well. Now before you start, I do know the Pro 1000 is a thousand pound printer, it's got 12 inks, it's pigment, it's the flagship of A2 printers that Canon produce. And now I'm comparing it to an A4 Mega Tank printer. I know it's not a fair test. However, the Pro 1000 does give me a lovely benchmark and it gives me that level that I can compare against. And that's the only reason kind of why I've used it. Now, the plan is to do a little bit of a shootout between the G550 and the IP8750 that Canon produce because they're around a similar price point. Although the 8750 is a, a three printer and this is a four, 
Um, I'm really interested to just have a look because they're around the same price point, like I said. So it'd be interesting to see how they compare, to be honest. But I am just waiting for Canon to send me an 8750 so I can do that comparison. But fingers crossed, I should have that out in the next couple of weeks as well. So that'd be quite interesting. Okay, so let's get some prints printed off and then let's have a look and actually see what the print quality is like because that is all that matters, I think, in my personal opinion. We want a real world test. I can print graphs off on it, or I can print this and that and show you about the sharpness and things. Then, but actually, let's see how it works and actually how easy it is to use and also what the prints are like, if they're good and if they're bad. Okay, now, before I print anything, what I wanted to do was print some custom profiles for this printer because that will give me the best colour and a lovely kind of look and um, it, will, it will just give me the best colour and it will give me a fair fight against the Pro 1000. However, I ran into a little bit of a snag which could be a bit of a problem for some users of this printer. When I went to Canon's website to download the drivers from my Mac, it said that there weren't any drivers and it was only AirPrint compatible. So that means I can't fully turn off color management in the printer on a Mac. And I've had to create profiles using the PC driver. So a little bit of a snag there. There is a workaround. It's not an easy workaround is to probably take the printer around to one of your mates with a PC and Windows based, get the drivers on, print off all the charts, then send them in to me so I can create them and then use them on your Mac as normal with the profiles and things. However, there is still a problem of turning off that color management with AirPrint installed, so it might not work as well as it could be. So what I've done for this test is I've made profiles on a PC, and then I've used those profiles to create these prints that we're gonna look at and actually see how it looks. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive into the prints and see how this printer actually performs. Now I've got everything printed off. Now first thing I want to say is, we said about the Legacy Gloss and it being a thicker paper and, and maybe the smaller type of printer struggling with the Legacy Gloss. However, I have to say, these are the prints here, it has done a fantastic job. It loaded the paper without any problem at all. I put the three sheets of paper in and clicked print on each bit and it took them without any trouble at all and fed them really nicely. There's no banding on the prints or anything like that. So it can handle the thicker papers perfectly. Also, as a little bit of a bonus, there's no head striking on the corners, which sometimes can happen on the thicker papers and we need to just to hire the head a little bit. But the GT550 absolutely, performed fantastically on this thicker paper. Also, color is absolutely fantastic. Again, I'm really impressed. It's been fantastic. Um, it's not quite the same as the Pro 1000, but again, it is a printer that costs five times as much, and it has 12 inks instead of six and things like that. So there is gonna be differences. However, it's performed fantastic. It is really vibrant. The colors look fantastic, especially on the legacy gloss here because it is a glossy paper, it's gonna work best with those dye inks. So it is gonna just have a little bit of something, a little bit of richness to it. Now, it just looks great. This flower picture here with all these um, colors in, just looks fantastic. I would say the Pro 1000 just has a little bit more fluorescent kind of in the pink there. Perhaps that's to do with the color gamma. Yeah. Now there's some lovely detail going on in the G series printer as well. Now, if I just move on to the landscape here on the Legacy Gloss, again, looks fantastic. Looks absolutely great, looks really nice and rich and crisp as well. That's the thing, because this was sh pin sharp this, so it looks really sharp and crisp. Now, let's talk a little bit about black and white as well, because I've got a black and white image here now, it looks great, it looks fantastic. Now, when I compare it to the Pro 1000, you will see there is a little, it's not quite as neutral, there's a little bit of magenta in the G-Series one. And this is where it falls down very slightly. 
I think this is more to do with perhaps not turning off that color management and profiling, but this was printed using the black and white mode. So yeah, it's not quite as neutral. So I think the big, the big selling point of this printer is going to be color images. If you want to print black and white pictures, it may not be the best printer to choose. But let's have a look at the PhotoSmooth Pearl because again, this is kind of an everyday paper and pretty much the same results. It looks fantastic in the color, looks absolutely fine. It just pops off the page and looks great, which is what I'd expect. The landscape looks crisp and sharp. We've got lovely detail going on in the mountains here. There is a slight difference in the color of the kind of the dandelions here. Um, a little bit more orangey on here. That could be the profile, just could be a bit more of a color there. It doesn't look unnatural, it doesn't look horrible. That's the main thing. So actually it looks great. Now again, with the black and white picture, again, I'm seeing the same thing. Now with the Pro 1000, it's beautiful and neutral. Whereas on the G series, there's just a little bit of magenta in there, I think. So it's just that difference. But actually when you hold it on its own, it looks pretty good. It's just when you start comparing it to the Pro 1000 that there is a little bit of a shift in there. So that may be in my video when I look at the um, 8750, where the 8750 can win out a little bit in black and white capabilities. But let's look here at the Matte Ultra. Again, I printed the same pictures here. And now I never know how a dye printer is going to perform on matte papers. It all depends on the printer. Now, if you've watched my EcoTank video, the 8550 actually performed fantastically in this area. And I have to say, it's done a pretty good job. I'm really impressed. It looks great. The colors look fantastic as well. On the landscape, now if I turn it up the right way, then pretty much the same results. We've got a lovely kind of nice contrasty image. We've got detail in there. The mountains there are fantastic. I would say very slightly, just looking at them, the dot grain is a little bit finer on the Pro 1000, but that is something I would expect to see on a printer that costs five times the amount, to be honest. The resolution and the DPI is a little bit finer. Although they kind of, they, they quote the same kind of spec, really that 1200 DPI, then, <sighs> I would say it is a little bit closer. The dots are a little bit closer together on the Pro 1000, but not really that noticeable unless you know what you're looking for and get a magnifying glass out and have a look. So let's look at the black and white on the Matte Ultra as well. Again, looks fantastic, looks great. Um, just a little bit of magenta in there as well. Now the last paper I tried was the NST Bright White. Again, this is a thicker type of paper, so I was expecting it to struggle a little bit, to be honest, and it didn't. It proved me wrong, and it did an absolutely fantastic job. Again, colour rendition absolutely fantastic. I'd be more than happy with the print that's come off this printer. I mean, it looks fantastic. There is a slight difference, again, with, between the Pro 1000, but again, it's if you're happy. And I think I keep saying to people when I do talks and things, are you happy? And I think with colour, I would be very happy with this printer sat on my desk. The only problem is it only is A4. I'd like an A3 version. Again, the black and white just has a little bit of magenta in there compared to the Pro 1000, that neutralness. But again, take it away. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's a pretty cool print. Um, perhaps a bit of blue in there as well, but actually it doesn't look too bad. Um, you could probably get away with it, shall we say? <laughs> Um, but compared against a lovely neutral print of the Pro 1000, it does there. Also the mountain picture, again, beautiful detail, lovely contrast. I actually like the contrast in the G series printer. It actually has brought out a, perhaps a little bit of detail. So maybe just need to do a little bit of work on here, but absolutely fine. I'd be more than happy showing people the prints coming off of this printer. It looks great. The color rendition is very nice as well. The only thing I have noticed, just going back to the black and white picture here, is because it hasn't got a matte black ink, I have noticed that the matte black, if you just rub it gently 
it could come off on your thumb and it's just not drying as well on the matte papers that that photo black ink effectively isn't drying as well or that dye ink here so a way round that is it's not the end of the world the way round that would be just to give your prints a nice spray with a print protect like we offer the photo speed print protect or the harlem ruler print protect and that will just solve that problem for you but as long as nobody's picking them up too much and rubbing their fingers all over them, you should be absolutely fine. Now, I hope that's giving you a bit of a, an overview, shall we say, of the printer. Like I said, I like to do tests in the real world. We haven't kind of dived into all the settings and everything like that. I just want to have a look at print quality because to be honest, that's all that matters. And I've been impressed. It's great. I think if I was a black and white printer, I would probably pr possibly just look at another printer, perhaps the 8750 in that kind of price bracket, because it possibly would give you more neutral prints. But for colour pictures, and if you only print up to A4 as well, absolutely fantastic. Now, I would say when I was printing these off, it was a little bit on the slow side, very slightly. Um, it took about three minutes to print a print which is a little bit slow when you're talking about an A3 however speed doesn't really matter as long as the print quality is good as long as you're getting decent prints off of that printer then I'm more than happy to wait for it to be honest and compared to like the Pro 1000 or something which is like five minutes and ridiculous then it's absolutely is fine the Epson is a little bit quicker so it does a print in about one minute 32 minutes however print quality I think is pretty good and also that you get that massive saving with those refillable inks. That is huge. But you do have to use dye inks. I am hoping in the future that print manufacturers, both, well, Canon and Epson, are going to produce pigment based refillable cartridges or refillable kind of reservoirs, should we say. I think that is where it's going. And it's going to be a few years before we see them, I believe. Um, but fingers crossed, they shouldn't be too far in the future and just around the corner. Now at the start of the video I promised a voucher code to get 15% off photo speed papers. Now that voucher code is FSYouTube15. Now you can use that voucher to get 15% off photo speed papers on photospeed.com. Also don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget our monthly competition hashtag FS monthly. This month it is reflection. So we're looking for all your reflection pictures and you can enter on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Just use the hashtag FS monthly. We're a chance to win a 50 pound voucher and a print made by myself. Now, as always, have an amazing week and I will see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.